Dave Ramsey has helped countless people out of debt and his books have sold millions. But what he says about property could be seriously damaging to your wealth. He's not saying don't do it. He's actually said that he loves real estate. If you didn't know, I have had two great loves in my life, doing what I do here and the real estate business. But the way he says to do it is not just making it harder. You might as well not bother. I don't have the radio show or the beard or the $200 million in net worth, but I do write about this stuff for a national newspaper. I've written my own bestsellers and I've been investing myself for 17 years. And I'll explain why I think Dave has an unhelpful bias based on his own early experiences. But to start with, let me ask you a question. Is property actually as good an investment as it cracks up to be? Of course, it generates rental income, but the average rental yield in the UK is 4.75%, and the income you can collect by just passively owning shares in the FTSE 100 is 3.78%. So property wins by 1% a year, but this is gross yield before accounting for any of your costs. By the time you've deducted repairs and other costs, you'll almost certainly come out behind when it comes to income. Okay, but what about capital growth? We hear about runaway house prices all the time, so surely that makes it worthwhile, right? Well, um. let's say you invested £100,000 25 years ago. Across the UK on average, that would now be worth £454,000. And in London, which has been the best performing region over that entire time, even though it hasn't been recently, it would be £580,000. Well, that sounds pretty good. Except, oh no, something got cropped off the side of the screen. Look at what you could have earned by investing in a basket of global equities instead. This would have made you £631,000 even more than the best performing part of the UK. That is pretty nuts. Who'd have thought that shares would comfortably be property? And that's before you even consider taxes, and because property can't be held inside tax wrappers, actual difference would be even larger. But this is missing something. Imagine there's a new type of lottery scratch card, where due to some kind of mistake in the way it's been printed, you're guaranteed to win something every time. You and your friend both hear about this and go out to buy as many as possible. But before you do, you pop around to see your old mum and convince her to lend you three times as much money as you're putting in personally. You'll give it back to her later, but all your scratch card winnings you keep. So who will profit most from the scratch cards? You or your friend? Well, clearly it's you. Even if your friend has better luck and scratches off slightly bigger prizes on the whole, you can buy four times as many cards. So of course you'll do better. Then you just pay your mum back and the first round of the pub is on you. This is what investing in property with a mortgage is like. The bank will lend you three quarters of the money and you get to keep all the gains. Okay, unlike your mum, they want some interest, but that should be covered by the rent. So in this case, the £454,000 you would have made for investing in property 25 years ago actually becomes 1.8 million because you're multiplying by four. You're buying four times as much. So of course you'll do better, even if the annual growth rate is somewhat lower than you get from shares, which you can apply leverage to in theory, but because of the volatility, it's not a good idea. So in practice, hardly anyone ever does. Now, in reality, you can probably only multiply by three because you've got taxes and other costs to cover out of your own funds. Even so, the difference is enormous. What if property prices fall though? Well, we'll come to that. But first, I can hear Dave getting angry. When you give your income to someone else, you don't have it anymore. We have to stop and think, America. Dave Ramsey has repeatedly said things like this. I love investing in real estate, but I do it with cash. And this, for me, is getting it absolutely backwards. He's advocating for the unappealing version of property investment we saw earlier, where boring old shares have grown faster and the extra income advantages disappear after costs and taxes. And he's ruling out the version where someone else puts in a load of the money and gives you all the rewards. Why would he do that? Well, it's the same reason I don't eat olives. 30 years ago, I ate one, then threw up an assembly in front of the whole school. I think I was actually ill and the olive had nothing to do with it, but I haven't touched one since. And somehow this story has something to do with Dave Ramsey. Oh yeah, it's because Dave was so badly bitten by mortgages many years ago. Dave has this to say about risk. More debt equals more risk. You know, after I went broke, I had to analyze and go, okay, what went wrong here? See, I had never lost money on a flip. I was not behind on the notes. They just called them. They had the ability to do that because it was commercial paper. It wasn't traditional mortgages. It was 90 days paper. I was doing 100% financed. I didn't have any money. Thing is, he's absolutely right. Introducing debt introduces risk, period. <laughs> if it's not worth it to you to introduce any risk into your life in search of a high reward, don't do it. But his risk was totally different. He was putting in none of his own money. He was flipping properties instead of holding them, and he was using a type of loan that could just get called away at a moment's notice. And because of that, he's sworn off all debt. 
It's the equivalent of if I refuse to visit Greece or talk to anyone called Olivia. So how do you avoid being as black and white about leverage as Dave is and harness the advantages while controlling the risks? Well, the key is to make sure you're never forced to sell. There'll be times when the price of property rises quickly and times when it falls quickly. You just need to avoid being forced to sell at times when it's fallen. This means being able to service your debt so you must be able to generate an income that pays the mortgage. There will also be times when the cost of your debt rises and times when it falls. So you need to stress test your investment against this, which banks do for you these days. And you need to make sure that you've got cash on hand. Dave is being like a dad who won't let you ride your bike in the park with a helmet on because he used to race motorbikes on public roads without any safety gear and he's treating them as if they're the same thing. But in reality, by using debt safely over the long term, you can realize incredible gains from property with dramatically less risk than trying to force those results without leverage through flips, refurbs, or developments. So how do you choose the right mortgage and make the best use of it? Thing is, many investors are making some terrible choices when taking out mortgage products, which are costing them thousands of pounds and dramatically slowing down their growth. So keep watching this video where I'll explain how to avoid the big mistakes that many investors make and how to choose the right mortgage for you with confidence.